Good Solo here. How's everybody doing today? Hope uh, you get a chance to watch this video. This is going to be part one of what I'm calling uh, Working at Adventureland. I'm going to fill you, in, fill you in a little bit on uh, just exactly what we do every day. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and pull up on your uh, computer uh, www.adventurelandpark.com and uh, the page that shows up there will have uh, several different categories on it one of them being employment so you can click on that employment and uh, this is where you'll find out uh, a lot of the information that you would need to know about working here now there's all there's an employee handbook and uh, you can scroll down the page and there will be a link where you can click on the employee handbook and this is going to be you've probably seen these kind of employee handbooks all your life but uh, it talks about uniforms and pay periods uh, you know how to respect your uh, clientele at the park and a whole lot of mostly just common sense stuff that you, you would have been able to figure out on your own but it, it lets you know about the pay periods and uh, uh, all that. And uh, the down at the bottom of the page, there's also a park hours. Now, when you first get here, uh, and some people arrive earlier and some later, but uh, the park just opens on the weekends right at first for about the first uh, I don't know three weeks or something like that and then they started uh, uh, expanding the hours a little bit and uh, we end up going full time uh, sort of toward the end of June or uh, so and you'll be able to see that on the website also there's uh, a calendar laid out for every month and what the hours are when we first get here on those weekends the park hours are 10 to 6, and we work uh, one shift as opposed to a day shift and a night shift. And that one shift is, of course, the 10 to 6. And in that 10 to 6, you get a 15-minute break and a 30-minute break. As the park hours expand, then they break down into two shifts which they call a day shift and a night shift and a whole lot of people want the day shift and I understand that there are a whole lot of people uh, in the older age group here and uh, a lot of them are kind of amazing I'm talking about 75 and 80 year old people that are volunteering to work double shifts and everything else and I don't want to I've, I've worked a couple of double shifts when asked but I don't have any real big desire to work a, a double, which would be from 10 in the morning until uh, 9 or 10 at night, depending on which night it is. On Right now, on Friday and Saturday, the park doesn't close till 10. The rest of the week, it's 9. And I really didn't care about uh, working that, and I told them I really didn't care about it, but if they really needed me, I would. And they said, well, we wouldn't ask if we really didn't need you. So uh, I think some people have... Uh, they have decided that this job just isn't for them and they've left and they're a little bit short on help over there but the uh, schedule the work schedule and all that stuff that is up right now is uh, for the 2017 season I don't know when the 2018 will go up and I do not know when they will start hiring for 2018 but there is a phone number on the website that you could call and get this information. Now I'm going to have a few clips here of the different jobs. You're after you uh, get to the employment page. There is uh, a application sort of thing. It's not real long and it's not real complicated. And there are some questions on it. And uh, I did that one day somewhere, I think, where I was working, stealing a little Wi-Fi on a day off, and uh, it didn't take any time to fill that out. And it's through, 
I believe it's a third party employment type agency that filters these things and uh, they immediately gave my uh, phone number and uh, email over to Adventureland Park the human resources director there his name is Gary and uh, he's a real nice guy uh, he contacted me quickly I mean it was like within a couple hours I think and uh, so what you're gonna do then is uh, fill out a little more paperwork uh, and he wants to do an, an over-the-telephone interview with you and uh, when I'm talking about fill out a little paperwork a couple of things uh, he wanted was uh, a couple of pictures of you and your RV actually I think it was just one picture but I sent him three I think and uh, so they sort of wants to see what you look like and what condition your RVs in and and uh, you've seen in my other videos mine's old and everything and that wasn't any reason to uh, not hire me there are several old RVs here in the park and some uh, camper vans I've been asked that question uh, you can uh, work here out of a camper van if you want to or a converted van so that isn't any kind of issue uh, so anyway I went through the 14 or the 14 the 45 minute interview I think it was about that long and uh, it wasn't any grueling interview or anything it was uh, it was mostly him uh, talking and less me talking so that was a real good part of it but I don't want to drag this video out too long but I did take a few clips around the park uh, of the four different choices that you're given now there are other jobs here too so if you want to do something else like maintenance or uh, I don't know what other kind of job if you know how to juggle or do a puppet show or whatever let the people know and uh, I'm sure they would give you some some consideration but the main four jobs that you are uh, offered would be number one which is rides which I took there is foods uh, there are games and there's retail so I have a few clips of each of those I couldn't take much because uh, there's music playing everywhere and uh, for those of you that watched that days off be, uh, video I made and I bought that big giant uh, Jurassic Park <laughs> uh, turkey drumstick that I was walking around with I had to take a clip of that and, and delete it because uh, somewhere way off in the background I didn't even know there was any music playing really didn't notice it uh, some copyright uh, some person held a copyright to that uh, song tagged that I mean really quick just as soon as I uploaded it to uh, YouTube uh, the YouTube editor then uh, I got a little flag on it no trouble or anything like that but I didn't want to deal with that kind of stuff so I just deleted the thing so uh, there aren't a whole lot of clips but just to let you know what the four different jobs are uh, I did do some different clips on it. So the first of this is going to be rides. That's the department I'm in. And our schedule, after we got into the full go, is they have a day shift, which is uh, they call 10 to 3. You actually show up 20 minutes before that time. So you show up at 940 in the morning. And uh, wherever you meet in your particular food thing the rides people all meet at what we call the uh, commissary and that's also the place where we eat lunch and uh, uh, the offices are and different things like that uh, and the night shift they call it three to nine or three to ten whatever the hours are uh, on that day and we show up 20 minutes before that time so we show up at 2.40 to do a 3 o'clock shift. And it's time you get paid for. Uh, most of these folks uh, show up, you know, 10 minutes earlier than the 20 till, 15 minutes earlier than the 20 till. They have ice and water available. Uh, so we're filling up our water jugs. 
it's one of the funny things here at the park. All of us are walking around with a with a water jug everywhere we go. <laughs> but uh, when you're at a ride, you know you're there until uh, you get relief for lunch or whatever. And so uh, out in that sun, and you're working in the sun, uh, you can work yourself up a powerful thirst. Uh, I one day went through three jugs of water on, on one of those days that I was working a, a double. So uh, I'm going to get into a couple of the rides clips and and uh, let you see just what a ride's uh, operator is doing or a ride's attendant. Those are the two things. If you chose the rides department, this is an example of a ride that has a single operator. You can see the guy there after all the ride has been loaded with the uh, riders, then the uh, operator's going to operate this ride. I'm showing this one because it's one of the few ones that the operator actually has control over. Uh, most of the movements on the rides are computer or mechanically controlled, but here uh, the, the uh, operator has to get these things going up and down real good. He's going to let these rise to a certain point, and then he's going to have to use the air compressor to make these go up and down quite a bit. So you get lift with it. And not to bad mouth him, but I think I'd do it better. <laughs> <laughs> this is my ride this week. It's uh, July 12th, and uh, we get a ride a week, and uh, this is my ride this week. Okay, so you saw those two clips, and uh, the first clip was a ride operator on a ride that only had a single employee running the whole thing. So uh, that individual is responsible for loading the uh, ride with the guest and uh, making sure that any seat belts or sh uh, shoulder harnesses or any other safety device is uh, secure and in place and then operating the ride and let, let me also speak a little bit to that uh, we're trained on everything we do here and the rides aren't that difficult to operate none of them that I have so far you will in your first year here uh, get an opportunity to be the operator on a few different rides now there's also an assistant to the operator and, and some rides have two assistants to the operator and uh, they're usually the assistants are involved in uh, checking the safety devices and uh, loading the guest onto the ride and uh, getting the guest off the ride and everything that you have to do like that but uh, it doesn't take a long time to train on any of this stuff but they do uh, ask you if you feel comfortable before they turn you loose on something if you're not feeling like that you really have it down and uh, Then they're not going to have you operate it until you do feel that way So let's move on to uh, Foods If you chose food when you applied for the job here then you could be working at uh, any one of the places like this now that's spectators sports bar and grill that's a, a sports bar over in the hotel but they have a booth over here and uh, that's where I got that big giant turkey leg that other day but there are some funnel cakes 
and uh, down through there they serve tacos and pizza and uh, submarine sandwiches. You can buy uh, beer there too, plus all kind of soft drinks. So this is uh, this is the kind of place you would be working if you were in foods. Now also. Uh, throughout the park there are other food places that sell chicken and, and uh, different kind of things and uh, dipping dots and ice cream so if you chose foods and I don't know a whole lot about it uh, you know to tell you as far as your hours and all that but if you chose foods then uh, you may be working somewhere like this if you're in foods uh, this is another place you might be working it's called the Chicken Shack. It's pretty decent. Okay, so those were a couple of short clips on some food places here in the park. And uh, there's much, much more than you saw there. Uh, they have banquet facilities here, uh, places where people can have weddings and uh, uh, corporate events and uh, anywhere that you might have large groups and they also prepare food for those groups so you may be in a uh, setting like a real big kitchen where you're producing a, a whole lot of food for a banquet or something like that uh, what I showed in these clips were, uh, were sort of like fast food places really you walk up to a window and and order some chicken fingers and some fries and then and uh, so the, the people in there fix that and, and uh, customer pays for the order, takes it and goes on. And their schedule also seemed to be uh, about the same as ours. I asked a couple of people in foods and, and uh, so I think they work about the same hours we do. But if you choose foods, then that's what you're going to be doing. Okay, now we can talk about games a little bit. Now, some of you might be interested in uh, working in the games department. And uh, the games here are just like uh, things you've seen at any amusement park or any carnival that, that maybe is, has uh, came through your town and set up in a shopping center or whatever. And I used to love those carnivals when I was a kid. I just went there and had a blast. But... Uh, and I guess that's one reason that I wanted to come and give this a shot at working this uh, at this amusement park because uh, I've always been a little bit enthralled with the whole thing, and I'm glad I did this. But uh, anyway, let's show a couple of game clips, and uh, well, I think I only have one game clip, but uh, I couldn't get close to that and record any of it because. Uh, uh, they're playing a lot of like classic rock and stuff like that and I knew I'd get copyright tags so I just didn't even mess with it that much. But I believe they also, I talked to a games person the other day and asked what kind of hours they worked and I think their hours are, are similar to uh, the hours in the rides department. But anyway, this is just a little not very good shot of the games area. Okay, over here is the uh, game section. They have all kind of games in there. If you choose games, this is what you'll be doing. Uh, they uh, have all these stuffed animals and everything, just like you'd find at a carnival. And that's about all I can tell you about games. I don't know how many hours they work or how they operate, but I do notice that uh, it's a whole lot of younger people. You know, like mostly high school age kids are working those games. So uh, if you choose games, this is the kind of place where you'll be standing. There are a couple other places in the park, but this is the main little game, game area. Okay, lastly, you can choose retail. Now the retail is, the name retail just makes it obvious. You're going to be selling stuff. Uh, or working as a clerk, however you want to look at it, in some kind of little retail place. All through the park, there are places where you can buy souvenirs and trinkets and t 
t-shirts and hats and travel bags and I don't know just what all kind of stuff they have here but uh, if, if you have worked in retail in your life and you would like to stay in something that's familiar to you then uh, these uh, retail shops uh, they don't seem to be anything out of the ordinary or, or anything I would be afraid of I, I think they probably have to count stuff and uh, you know, watch and make sure people aren't putting stuff in their pocket and and just like if you were working at J.C. Penney or somewhere. But anyway, I got a couple of clips of the retail. And in one of them, you won't be able to hear the question, but uh, uh, in the second clip, uh, one of the people uh, asked me if I was a secret shopper. And uh, I said no, but I had been uh, thinking about applying for a job like that before. Uh, on, I mean, it's about three times I caught some employees in my camera, and each time they were, they were kind of wondering if I was working for the park, trying to catch them doing something, and uh, so I had to tell them that wasn't the case. But anyway, here are here are a couple of cl uh, clips of a couple of the little uh, retails. All right, this is a typical retail store if you choose retail. They have all kind of little knickknacks and souvenirs, refrigerator magnets, keychains, Christmas decorations, bags of all sorts, coffee cups. So that'd be the kind of stuff you were doing if you were in retail. Here's another larger store with just all kind of stuff in it, toys and candy and all kind of stuff. How's everybody doing this morning? If you have anything bad to say about your job, this is a good opportunity. We love our job. Okay. <laughs> it's a wonderful park. Have a good day. I'm just, I'm a work camper over here doing a little You got your name tag on. Yeah, doing a little, uh, what are we doing here? No. I've thought about applying for that, though. <laughs> okay, that was retail. Uh, if you want to choose retail, you'll be doing something like that. Now, in summation of this video, I'm sure all of you would like to know how we're paid. And uh, we get free rent here at this campsite. And I consider that to be a real big plus. Uh, that includes all the electricity you want to use, and there's no limit on it. You can, If you have five air conditioners in your massive $300,000 motorhome, you can run a full blast 24-7 the whole time you're here. Uh, that's just the way that is. There's a sewer dump and there's water. And uh, the water tastes good. I have for the last several years been running my drinking water through a pure uh, water filter. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. And uh, one of those pitcher things. And uh, I've been using that to drink, and I also think it makes my morning coffee uh, taste better. Uh, whether it does or not, I don't know, but uh, I have that in my head, so that's what I do. So that's free. There's Wi-Fi here. The Wi-Fi, uh, a lot of people complain about it. I have figured out how to use it uh, fairly well. Uh, I have... Uh, an external Wi-Fi antenna that I run through a signal booster that goes into my laptop. I also, and a lot of people don't do this, but I take my laptop, it's sitting in the front seat, the passenger side seat. Uh, I've got a build up place there for it to sit and I have the back of that laptop pointing toward the antenna also. So my laptop is hooked to an HDMI cable 
which goes into my TV, and that's where I watch the laptop. So it can sit out in the front seat, I don't care. Uh, I rigged this thing up here. This is a, a notebook. I have glued a mouse pad to it, and this is a remote mouse. And so I sit right where I am right here. There's my TV, and so I watch my laptop on the TV. Now there have been real high traffic times where it was really, really slow, and if uh, I'm trying to watch my favorite YouTube people, you get the little circle in the center, you know, and then it'll play for, you know, another 60 seconds, and then you get another little circle. That happens during peak times a couple of times a day, so I'm just letting you know the truth about the Wi-Fi. Now on to the pay. We all get paid eight dollars and fifty cents an hour which is not great money and I left a job paying more than that to come here but uh, you couple that with the free rent and the mobile home I mean the uh, campground and that's not too bad plus uh, it says on the website that it's a fifty cent per hour bonus at the end of the season it's actually seventy five cents so that will bump the hourly rate up to 925. Now that's assuming you stay the entire time. Now I have allotted this time out in my life and uh, unless these people are just really super mean to me, uh, which they're not, uh, I'm gonna stay through the end of September for the whole season and hopefully uh, there won't be some reason for me to leave and, and I can get that bonus. I figure probably, and I haven't sat down and figured it up because I don't know uh, if there are going to be days the park is closed because of extremely bad weather, uh, which hasn't happened since the first weekend after we opened. And I don't know if, uh, you know, I'll have to be called home for some emergency reason or I don't know if I'll become ill. I don't know anything. So I haven't sat down and done that math problem on that yet of how much that would be, but just a real good guess I think it's going to be somewhere like three or four hundred dollar check at the end that I will get uh, now that's before taxes uh, because of the 75 cents so I figure that's just sort of like in a savings account there's also and I've had a little bit of a difference in talking to some some uh, co-workers about this but the way it was said to me was that there was a four hundred dollar per site uh, bonus if you stay the entire time also. Now I had one person say well that's they're, they're, they're figuring that on uh, two people in the RV like a man and wife team so it's going to be $200 per person and that's not the way it was told to me so it said per site. Now I'm on a site and to me the way I heard it uh, I was supposed to get $400 per site so I'll find out how that was. If I'm wrong about that, I'll let you know in a later video. And this is the last uh, point I'm going to make on this video, and then I'll let you folks go. Uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, what I was going to say is that I'm still not going to do a pro and con video about this job until it is completely done and that is going to be at the end of September now I may do a couple of other videos about my life here at the park between now and then but I'm not going to do a uh, pro and con video until I'm done with this job because uh, if somebody over there at the campground is watching this I don't want to ruffle any feathers or get anybody uh, angry or anything like that before this job is over with and there's nothing super damaging or anything I can tell you that because the people around here have been real nice and all that and I'm not walking around on eggshells and people aren't in my butt all day and all that kind of stuff but like any job there are going to be things that you like about it and there are going to be things that you don't like about it 
So uh, I'm going to do all that in the last video here. And then I'll probably uh, put all of these videos into a playlist or something like that. But anyway, I hope this helps some of you. If you have any questions at all, please ask. Uh, I'm sure there are things that I have forgotten or things that I don't think about all that much. And so I didn't include them in this video. But uh, I hope this helps uh, some of you in determining whether you would like to do this. Uh, in the 2018 season. Thank you for watching.